first day of trade, down another 5% today. Endeavor decided to pull the plug on its offer late last night. A headline in the Times today sums it up, asking, is the IPO party over? Joining us is the former chairman and CEO of the NASDAQ, Bob Greifeld, now chairman of Virtue Financial and a CNBC contributor, also author of the new book, Market Mover, Lessons from a Decade of Change at NASDAQ. Bob, it's great to have you back. Happy Friday. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, we'd love for you to help us uh, just draw a thread through some of the uh, IPO pricing that we've seen this week, the offers that have been pulled. Um, what should investors be keeping in mind right now? Well, first, I would say that we have to recognize the IPO market generated over $50 billion of capital this year. I remember back in 2003 when I started with NASDAQ, we had zero IPOs and zero, zero dollars raised. So let's keep it all in context. I also want to make clear that you have a number of IPOs that have come public, which are not now making money. So we talk about Peloton, which came public yesterday, right? Their market cap is still around $10 billion. That's about 10 times revenue. So to me, when I hear and read about what's wrong with the IPO market, I think the goalposts move very high, right? To float a company at 10 times revenue that's money losing, that's a pretty successful outing. Bob, is this partly what happens when you try to shove a year and a half worth of IPOs uh, <laughs> into a year? I mean, this is a very active year of IPOs besides the $50 billion you mentioned. Um, could it be that the demand just isn't there uh, as well as the valuation issues? I think that's a great point. For the market for investors to absorb $50 billion, really not in 12 months, but we're you know, nine or 10 months into it, is quite a statement. So I think you have something there. There is a certain amount of supply you can provide to the market at one time. And certainly we've had a rush to the door uh, this year. And I think that's impacted some of the IPOs, but not all of them. All right. So if everybody's trying to get to the dance at once, uh, how long of a period of absorption do we need before you can get other large deals to market and not disrupt everything? Well, I, I think what you have to look at is the quality of the offerings. Anytime you have difficulty in the IPO market, we see there's a flight to quality. So clearly, if you have a company that is actually generating profit that is growing, I think that window is wide open. But to the extent you have a story to tell, like we and others, where you're not making money in certain situations, your losses have increased, that's going to be very difficult for some period of time here. You think you actually need to have paper profit in order to come to market, or is the promise of one still good enough? I, I think the path to profitability has to be fairly clear uh, right now. It has to be a line that you can see and not just a story that you have to believe in. And we look at the WE uh, IPO, you saw that regardless of what they said and the story they weaved, they were still in a real estate business that had its amount of peril to it and you had a somewhat limited path to profitability. Bob, what does this do to private markets? I mean, in Silicon Valley, we've seen this for the past decade, let's say, as a trend toward companies staying private longer because there's money there for them. Even employees able to cash out during uh, some, some of these transactions uh, in private markets. Are, are they getting the price wrong now in a way that's going to affect how that works for the next 10 years. The first thing you have to really focus on is private market valuations are fundamentally different than public market valuations. In a private market, most of the transactions are bilateral, and they're also not dealing with common stock. They're dealing with some kind of structured note. And I remember many years ago, I heard the term, and it stuck with me, said, if you name the price you want, I'll give you the terms I want. Or if you name the terms, I'll give you the price. So when you see the price, the headline price in private market company deals, you have to recognize there are terms associated with that that has economic value. So the public market, you're dealing with common stock, with many investors, discovering a price without terms except you're buying, selling, and you're going to clear the transaction in two days. So there are two different worlds there. I'd also say the private market, since it's primarily bilateral, 
has a greater uh, opportunity to get that price wrong. Right? Clearly, public markets have misfunctioned where they have mispriced assets, but that's with many people voting. When you have two people voting to come up with a private market valuation, that obviously has a greater uh, percent probability of having something wrong with that price. Yeah. Well, speaking of valuations being wrong, I guess, quote unquote, I wonder, where's your head on SoftBank right now? And it's, um, it, the, its potential to become a liability for the broader market, uh, the way in which their, their fund has been modeled and the bets they've made that this year, if you look at Uber and Sprint even and WeWork, uh, have gone wrong. Yeah, well, I would say this. One, they, they're dealing on a very large scale, and they're dealing with a lot of assets that are in some ways priced not to perfection, but perfection plus. So that's going to be tough to pull over in the long term. We is a great example where you had a $47 billion valuation put on it by SoftBank. Now, we had a great story, and when I went to visit their offices, it really struck me that it was going back again to 2003. 2005 in the dot-com era where you used to have great user interfaces for websites and companies were valued on that and eyeballs. We went to we we had a great user experience as a person who came to work every day and I liked the feeling in those uh, that situation. But at the end of the day it was a real estate play and we had one really problem is that they had public company comps that essentially did the same thing. When you stripped away the great user interface, whether it was a website or real estate, you have to look at what is the core business. And this was a core leasing real estate business, which has a certain value associated with it. And that value had been firmly established by the public markets for a long period of time. And that was a very hard thing for them to argue with. So other investments that SoftBank have might not have such a clear comp associated with it, but they will have to deal with fundamental economic reality at some point in time.